a few moments and to have this great opportunity to share just a few words. This is the President's Chapel Day and certainly we honor him in absentia, our Dean, Provost, and faculty and staff. And certainly we are happy to have the members of the Board of Trustees on our campus who have the right responsibility of governance and we pray that they are having a productive meeting wherever and they are at this particular time. But above all, we thank the students because you are the ones who keep us in business. Keep the lights on and uh, enable us to have gas to drive to class. <laughs> and we are always delighted to see you. I'm again very honored to be here for just a few moments. I promise you I won't be long. I'll speak up to be heard and sit down to be appreciated. Um, um, so um, I ask for your attention for just a moment or two. I certainly am very happy to be alive at this season of the year. I served churches for a full time for 30 years. And uh, when I was serving churches back in the 60s, uh, what we did was we praised God on Sunday and picketed on Monday. And uh, I came out of that milieu of an active pastor. All right. And I had the good fortune of uh, pastoring in Birmingham, Alabama, and in the 60s, and was acquainted with Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, a great civil rights leader, great minister who has fallen and pulled off mortality and put on immortality right. a few days ago. But I remember him and the great work that we did in Birmingham, Alabama, and the great work that he did. Certainly Alabama is a very unique place. It was the major battleground for the civil rights movement people in Birmingham, probably more than anywhere else, uh, seal their witness with their lives. Right. I think of the four little girls at the 16th Street Baptist Church who died um, because the Ku Klux Klansman had placed a bomb in the basement of the church and they were getting ready to go to sing in the choir the bomb blasted and they were blasted into eternity. And then I remember also the confrontation in Selma, Alabama, where there were people killed for the Voting Rights Act. Viola Luzzo and James Rebs and Jimmy Lee Jackson, they all died for our freedom so that's the reason I say that we certainly want to remember them, and particularly Fred Shuttlesworth. I sometimes share with my friends, my close friends, a little story. In 1969, my family and I, we were moved out of Birmingham to Durham, North Carolina, and as we were leaving, I only had a little money to have us a a poor Methodist preacher, and uh, my car, my 65 Impella car, it was Chevrolet, it was, the tires were almost flat, the carburetor was not right, the fuel pump was not acting right, there were all kinds of little noises that I didn't like to hear, but I had to get to Durham, North Carolina, and as I was leaving with my wife and my four little children, we got about 50 miles outside of Birmingham, and lo and behold, I heard a strange noise in the trunk of my car. I got out the car and went to the back of the car. 
and opened the trunk, and lo and behold, it was a black snake. I believed in Martin Luther King and nonviolence, but just in case, I had a 45 <laughs> in the glove compartment of my car. So I went back and to the glove compartment of my car and got my 45 out and went back to shoot the snake. The snake looked up and said, don't shoot. I want to get out of Alabama just like you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad to be here <laughs> in the name of the Lord. <laughs> okay, I'm happy to be here. So, so if I get a little excited and you know, don't 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 blame it on me. <laughs> okay, but I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be able to raise my hand. I'm glad to be able to clap my hand. I'm glad to be able to pat my feet. I wouldn't have a religion that I couldn't feel because I'd lose it and I wouldn't miss it. But I'm glad to be here in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. For just a few moments, we want to talk about Daniel and his friends. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a typical preacher. My, one of my seminary professors said to me one day, he said, you know, you only have one sermon. And... Uh, I'm going to preach, try with God's help and your prayers. Just say a few words about this one sermon that I have. It's about Daniel and his friends. And, and uh, I want to relate it to some of our experiences, particularly as African-Americans. And when I relate it to the African-American experience, I'm relating it to all people, regardless of their race, color, ethnicity and nationality because African people are the original people and all other people are related to us. Okay? So we are all in a sense African. We are all related. So this is an inclusive message. But I do want to just say a few words. I just want to pick a few verses. And if I would use a theme for Daniel and his three friends, it would be so I talk about his three friends, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It would be uh, what's in a name. Let's talk about your name. <laughs> what is, you know, your name? And that's kind of wonderful. When I was growing up and playing around on the, down in Macon, Georgia, Sister McCrary, uh, Somebody asked me my name, Puttin' and Tame. Yeah. Ask me again, I'll tell you the same. <laughs> you know, what's in the name? Yes, yes. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt me. That's not true. They can destroy you. And so that particularly when it comes to people of our hue, we're going to talk about names. And if you read this uh, scripture, I think uh, this young man taught it Caricope, whatever that is. Uh, uh, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, Woo! king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim came of Judah into his hands. And some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Babylon, to the house of the gods, and brought the articles into the treasure house of the God. And the name of this God in Babylon was Marduk. That was the name of the God. And I see here, this, what strikes me right here is carried in, out of their homeland. Uh, I would call that deracination. They were uprooted from Israel and taken over into battle, into Babylon. As people of African descent, it resonates with us because our ancestors were also rooted up from their homeland. And, right, sir. And, uh, and uh, put on 
on slave ships. Uh, hadn't done anything to anybody, just arbitrarily taken from one side of the world to the other side of the world. Mm. And uh, taken, uh, uprooted, and uh, we call it the Atlantic, no, not the Atlantic, but the European Atlantic triangular slave trade. Mm. Because the Atlantic Ocean didn't do it. <laughs> it was, let's give it a face, let's give it a name. It was the European Atlantic, transatlantic slave trade yes, yes. that did it. Oh, Brought them over here on slave ships. And all of the countries that were involved in the slave trade were Christian nations. Mm. And they tried to even invoke holy names on the ships. Said not. Call the ships that brought our ancestors over here brotherhood, charity, love. Mm. And that was the name same as charity. And they also the lead ship that was taking our ancestors over here, they called it Jesus. Mm. Let Jesus lead you <laughs> all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. Ah, my, my. And that, uh, that, that resonates with us. And, 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 and what we want to do, and, and I suggest, is you, we want to see ourselves in these scriptures. Yes. See our experience in these scriptures that we read from the Hebrew Bible. Because if we don't see ourselves, we will be promoting the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob more than we will the God of Sojourner Truth, yes. and Harriet Tubman, yes. and Frederick Douglass. In other words, we will continue to enslave our, preach, our people. Well. We will continue to, to promote a hybrid Christianity. We do not see ourselves and elevate our story in these stories. Marvelous stories on the slave ship where our ancestors were packed like sardines in a can, captured and brought to the barracoon on the Atlantic Ocean and placed there and chained. Sometimes as they were coming across the Atlantic, men were chained to each other by the ankles and sometimes your chain mate would die. And sometimes you would be on the slave ship for two weeks or three weeks with a dead body chained to your, 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 your ankle. Mm. And really, 20 million of our people are buried in the Atlantic Ocean. Their graves are in the Atlantic Ocean. And you know, being a minister, I, 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 I found out from uh, uh, that, that, the, that, that all of the hurricanes originate in Africa, and they travel, they travel the route of the slave ship. And sometimes I let my sanctified imagination get away with me. And I believe it's the spirits of our ancestors rising up from the ocean. My Lord, this is it resonates with me when I see this. My Lord, my mind. As I think about them, carried away, deported, transferred from one side of the world to another, and think about how God moves in mysterious ways. One of the main slave captains was a man by the name of John Newton. And God can turn you around. And this same slave captain who made many dollars from the slave trade God touched him one day from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. He was called to preach. And this same man wrote one of the most beloved hymns of Christendom, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And he thought about the slave ship and what he had done and how God picked him up and how God turned him around. He began to write through many dangers. Toils and snails, I have already come. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Woo! Grace. 
brought me. Save us, Father. Grace will lead me on. Well, I move on through this caricope. I see. And I see where it says here. So one more, one more scripture here where it says, in the third verse it says here, the, the master of the eunuch, this is King Nebuchadnezzar saying to the master of the eunuch, said, I just don't want you to bring anybody. But I don't want you to be selective in who you put on the ship. He said, I don't want no old folk with one foot in the grave and the other on a banana peel. But I want young men, children who are unblemished. I want, I want good looking people, gifted and all wisdom, possessing knowledge, quick to understand. I don't want no dummies. I want people with cognitive skills who are able to understand philosophy and wisdom and possess knowledge, quick to understand, and who have the ability to serve the king's palace and who might be able to learn the language and the literature, who might be able to speak the language, the Akkadian language. I want somebody who able to master the language, to get to the original source. That's what I want somebody to do. Oh, and that resonates with the African-American experience. The slave captains, and as they were looking for people in Africa, they just didn't get anybody. They brought the royal children from royal families. Yes. Not only that, they looked around and they picked people who had skills. Uh, they went to areas like Mali where they knew how to plant cotton. Mm -hmm. They went to places like Benin in Africa and got people out of Benin because they knew how to plant rice. And that is the reason they brought them to the Carolinas so they could cultivate the rice fields. That They brought people like that. They brought people who could Carpenter, who knew carpentry, who knew brick masonry to the country. They selected the ones that they wanted to come to this. We are somebody as African Amen. people. We are a royal priesthood. Yes. We are a holy nation. Yes. We are a chosen people. Yes. One reason we are chosen is because the reason the Jews were considered to be chosen is because they were landless, and they were homeless, they were rootless, and the reason they were chosen is because nobody else wanted them but God. My Lord. My <laughs> so they became a chosen people, and so are we. We are chosen people. We are a peculiar people. We are a special people. Thank you, God. That's what God has done to us. Look at where God has brought us from. Yes. Look what God has done for us and how God has, has been so good to us. Look, just look around in less than 150 years where we are and what God has done. Everything we get involved in, we take it to a new level. I remember in 1947, before 1947, Black people could not play in the major leagues. And here comes a, a little boy from Cairo, Georgia, by the name of uh, Jackie Robinson, pigeon toed, okay, <laughs> running down third base. And when he became the first African American to come to the major league, he lifted it to a new level. There was a time when black people could not play in the NFL. But here comes a guy by the name of Jim Brown. When Jim Brown played with the Cleveland Browns, they didn't need an offensive coach. They only had one play. Jim Brown to the right, Jim Brown to the left, Jim Brown down the middle. What a mighty God. We've taken it to a new level. Tennis. Look at the William girls. Golf. I don't care what he claims to be, he looks like one of us. <laughs> T 
taking it to a new level. My God, my God, what a mighty God we serve. Herman Cain with all of his buffoonery, but oh goodness, you can't turn on the television without them talking about him because we are a creative people. And that's the reason I get on the students and I want you to go to the heights and remember that the heights of great men and women reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they by their companions slept were toiling up within the night. If you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley. If you can't be a highway, be a trail. Can't be the sun, be a star. It's not by size you win or fail, but be the best of whatever you are. We are somebody. We are God's children. We are Alpha and Omega. Ain't God all right? Oh, I know he's all right. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. Yes, he's all right. Thank you, God. We are God's children. Yeah. We are special in the sight of Almighty God. And that's the way the enemy does. Isn't that the way the enemy does? Oh yes, after with integration, he wants the best, rob us of our best. That's what happened with integration. It really robbed us, black institutions, with integration. They got the best students, took them across the track, they got the best teachers, took them across the track. Oh yes, that's what they did. I read, I was reading the Duke a magazine and in 1950, North Carolina Central University played Duke University basketball. That was back during segregation. One Sunday morning while the good holy folk were in church, they decided they would have a basketball game over at North Carolina Central with, with Duke University. And you know what happened by halftime? Oh yes, North Carolina Central was leading by 35 points. Ma, ma, ma. The coach at Duke decided he'd take his team back across the track because they were losing the game. That is what I'm talking about when we are talking about they get the best, they want the, of the crop, and that is where we are. And then I want to say, just one more thing, and then I want to take my seat, and that is I see here in the seventh verse of the first chapter, I see here where it says to them, all the chief of the units, and he decided to change their name. And Daniel gave him the name Belteshazzar, and Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. I remember during the antebellum days when a slave preacher couldn't pronounce all those names, he said Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro. But uh, we don't have to do that now, but there is something about a name, oh yes, our name has been changed. Your name represents your identity. It represents who you are. Identity theft in the world started with a slave trade. That's when they first started our name because they took our name. It's just good, you see, you need to know who you are. Uh, it's wonderful, it's hard for us to know who we are because our names have been distorted. Our names have been so misrepresented. We have been called everything but a child of God. Uh, so it's hard for us to know our identity. That is the reason W.E. Du e. Du Bois called it the dialectical double consciousness. Uh, oh yes, uh, I remember uh, when I was a little boy uh, growing up uh, in Macon, Georgia. Uh, I came home uh, one day, uh, and when I came home, uh, I was imitating uh, a rock and roll singer. Uh, it was all right uh, for me uh, to imitate the preacher, uh, or to imitate a lawyer, uh, but she didn't want me uh, imitating uh, a rock and roll singer. Uh, my grandmother uh, put uh, her hand in my collar, uh, 
and she applied the Board of Education to my anatomy. Uh, and she said, uh, boy, uh, I want to tell you, uh, you got to know your identity. Uh, she said to me, uh, be what you is, uh, because if you ain't what you is, uh, you is what you ain't. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, that's the reason uh, it's hard, uh, because uh, our names uh, have been changed. Uh, that is the reason uh, Paul Baldwin uh, wrote the name, the book, uh, Nobody uh, Knows uh, My Name. Uh, that is the reason uh, Malcolm X uh, said, I'm no longer uh, Malcolm Little, uh, but our name uh, is Malcolm X. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, because nobody, uh, nobody uh, knows uh, my name. Uh, that's the reason uh, we've got to keep on. Uh, the reason uh, we were called Negroes uh, is because the Europeans uh, didn't want us to know uh, that our names uh, was all through the Bible. Uh, and many of their names uh, are not in the Bible. Uh, even in the book of Genesis, uh, you see the name Cush uh, and Ethiopia uh, all through the Bible uh, and Egypt, uh, all of these places. Uh, what's in a name? Uh, oh, Lord, uh, I look at it uh, and try to find out. Uh, nobody's name uh, has gone through uh, as many name uh, metamorphoses uh, as African Americans. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, we have been called uh, Negro. Uh, we have been called a uh, colored. Uh, we have been called uh, African American. Uh, we have been called black. Uh, there's a story uh, that a newspaper columnist uh, was writing a newspaper article uh, and didn't want to offend uh, any of those names. Uh, so he said uh, a Negro policeman uh, arrested a colored man uh, in a black neighborhood. Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, in a name. Uh, nobody uh, uh, has a name. Uh, so they call our name. Uh, but oh, Lord. Uh, I found somehow, uh, even uh, during uh, slavery, uh, they couldn't uh, call their name. Uh, they didn't have a name. Uh, didn't want them to say their name. Uh, call them boy uh, or anything uh, that they wanted to call them. Uh, but we, uh, our ancestors uh, who were working uh, in the cotton fields of Georgia uh, and the Carolina fields, uh, they thought about uh, their home back in Africa uh, where they were called uh, Tuesday, uh, where they were called, uh, yes, Wednesday, uh, where they were called uh, Kenyatta, uh, where they were called Kofi, uh, but oh Lord, uh, and they got hungry uh, for the African name, uh, and somebody started singing, uh, hush, uh, hush, uh, somebody uh, is calling uh, my name, uh, somebody uh, calling my name. Uh, and as I close, uh, that is the reason uh, we have been able to make it. Uh, though the way gets dark, uh, and though the mountains get high, uh, hellhounds get on our trail, uh, we know, uh, hallelujah, uh, we know a name. Uh, oh, yes, uh, a name. Uh, I like to call that name uh, and like to look at that name. Uh, a name uh, that humbled himself, uh, said, let not uh, this mind be in you, uh, which was in Christ Jesus, uh, who being in the form of God, uh, did not consider robbery uh, to be equal with God, uh, but made uh, of himself uh, of no reputation, uh, taking on uh, the form of a servant. Uh, and that name, uh, that name uh, is the name, uh, is the name, uh, the name of Jesus, uh, the magnet lamb of God, uh, the rose of Sharon, uh, the lily of the valley, uh, the bright and morning star, uh, my rock, uh, my soul, uh, my shield, uh, my way out of my way, uh, my bridge over trouble water, uh, my God, my God, uh, my rock, uh, my wheel, uh, my God, uh, my alpha, uh, and my mother. Uh, that name uh, is above uh, every name. Uh, the name, uh, the name, uh, the name, uh, the name uh, of Jesus. Uh, I want to close now, uh, but that tell me uh, there was an old slave woman uh, who uh, 
Oh, Lord, uh, tell me she couldn't uh, read or write. Uh, but they gave her, uh, she found uh, an old Bible. Uh, and when she found the Bible, uh, she learned how uh, to spell uh, one uh, word. Uh, and that word uh, was J uh, E uh, S uh, U S. Uh, tell me uh, the old uh, slave woman, uh, when she would come home uh, at night uh, to a house slave cabin, uh, she would look uh, in an old Bible uh, for J uh, E uh, S uh, U S. Uh, she looked uh, through the Pentateuch. Uh, Yes, uh, Genesis, uh, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, uh, for J, uh, E, uh, S, uh, U, S. Uh, tell me, uh, she came uh, to the wisdom literature, uh, looked through uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, Job, uh, Psalms, uh, for J, uh, E, uh, S, uh, U, S. Uh, looked through uh, the prophets, uh, oh, yes. Uh, Amos, uh, Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel, uh, Malachi, uh, Jose, uh, for J, uh, E, uh, S, uh, U, S, uh, kept on looking, uh, kept on, uh, looking, uh, kept on, uh, looking, uh, till she got, uh, to the book, uh, of Matthew, uh, which says, uh, the book, uh, of the generation, uh, of Jesus Christ, uh, the son, uh, of David, uh, the son, uh, of Abraham, uh, she found, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, there's power uh, in that name, uh, there's joy uh, in that name, uh, Jesus, uh, wake me up this morning, uh, Jesus, and Lord, uh, Jesus, the name, Jesus, Jesus. I love to call his name Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there's something about that name, Jesus. The name uh, that charms our fears, uh, bids our sorrows cease, uh, music to the sinners air, uh, Jesus. Uh, I like to call his name uh, early in the morning, uh, in the midday, uh, Jesus. Uh, let me hear you call his name. Uh, let me hear you one more time. Let me hear you one more time. Let me hear you one more time. One for the Father. One for the Son. One for the Holy Ghost. Woo! Jesus. 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 Ain't it all right? Makes you feel all 